Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Morning Prayer. To God, the only God, who saves us through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, authority, and power, which he had before time began, now and forever. Amen. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen.
bringing our trespasses and transgressions, we humbly come before the Lord, seeking his forgiveness. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalms 41 and 52 Psalm 41 Happy are they who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and keeps them alive, so that they may be happy in the land. He does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me. When will he die and his name perish? Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their heart collects false rumors. They go outside and spread them. All my enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. A deadly thing, they say, has fastened on him. He has taken to his bed and he will never get up again. Even my best friend, whom I trusted, who broke bread with me, has lifted up his heel and turned against me. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up, and I shall repay them. By this I know you are pleased with me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast, and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from age to age. Amen. Amen. Psalm 52 You tyrant! Why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor, O oh, worker of deception. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt, O oh, you deceitful tongue. Oh, that God would demolish you utterly, topple you, and snatch you from your dwelling, and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble, and they shall laugh at him, saying, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth, and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of First Samuel, chapter 24, beginning at verse 1 through verse 22. When Saul returned from following the Philistines, he was told, David is in the wilderness of Engedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men out of all Israel, and went to look for David and his men in the direction of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds beside the road, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the inmost parts of the cave. The men of David said to him, Here is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. Then David went and stealthily cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. Afterward, David was stricken to the heart because he had cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to raise my hand against him, for he is the Lord's anointed. So David scolded his men severely and did not permit them to attack Saul. Then Saul got up and left the cave and went on his way. Afterwards, David also rose up and went out of the cave and called after Saul, My Lord the King! When Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of those who say, David seeks to do you harm? This very day your eyes have seen how the Lord give you into my hand in the cave. And some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not raise my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your cloak in my hand, for by the fact that I cut off the corner of your cloak and did not kill you, you may know for certain that there is no wrong or treason in my hands. I have not sinned against you. Though you're hunting me to take my life, may the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the ancient proverb says, out of the wicked comes forth wickedness, but my hand shall not be against you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A single flea? May the Lord therefore be judge and give sentence between me and you. May he see to it and plead my cause and vindicate me against you. When David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? 
Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you evil. Today you have explained how you have dealt well with me, in that you did not kill me when the Lord put me into your hands. For who has ever found an enemy and sent the enemy safely away? So may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. Now I know that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Swear to me therefore by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me and that you will not wipe out my name from my father's house. So David swore this to Saul. Then Saul went home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. The Word of the Lord. A Song to the Lamb Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. and yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb we worship and praise, dominion, and splendor forever and forevermore. A reading from the book of Mark, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1 through verse 20. Again he began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there, while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. All the seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil, and when the sun rose, it was scorched and since it had no root, it withered away. All the seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. All the seed fell into good soil, and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and the sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, 
Let anyone with ears to hear, listen. When he was alone, those who were around him, along with the twelve, asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. For those outside, everything comes in parables. They may indeed look, but not perceive, and may indeed listen, but not understand, so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy. But they have no root, and endure only for a while. Then, when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire of other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirty, and sixty, and a hundredfold. The Word of the Lord. For honor. I speak to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. According to the Oxford Dictionary, the verb honor is to regard with respect or to highly esteem someone or something. This esteem could be accrued to persons, especially persons of esteemed rank. To act honorably is a second use of this word. To act honorably is not only about acting with respect for others, but also about 
doing what is morally right, such as to keep one's word or to act with integrity. In our scripture today, 1 Samuel 24, 1 through 22, we see that David, the future king of Israel, was a fugitive running from King Saul. King Saul was at that time the king of Israel. These were two people, though both called by God and called by God's name and anointed by God, they were having a dispute. In the eyes of God, this was going to be a test to see who was truly for God or not. God had already known, he had already rejected Saul. But this was for the people to see exactly why God made this choice. The one who would be clearly a man of God would be the one who would act honorably. In the end, as much as King Saul wanted to kill David, we see that Saul himself was forced to recognize the honorable quality of David's character and to even endorse his ordination as future king of Israel. Weeping, he said to David, verse 17 of chapter 24. You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you evil. Today you have explained how you have dealt well with me, in that you did not kill me when the Lord put me in your hands. For who has ever found an enemy and sent the enemy safely away? So may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. Now I know that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. King Saul had hunted David to kill him, but David and his men had always managed to escape, always staying one step ahead of King Saul. But it was tiring being chased all over the desert. And one day, King Saul, in hot pursuit of David, stopped by a cave to relieve himself and to rest. As it turned out, he had unwittingly cornered David in the very cave he was hiding. The king, being now at his most vulnerable moment, was ripe for an ambush. David's men urged David to turn the situation around by killing the king while he was at his weakest. David was tempted. So, while the king slept, David crept up and cut off a piece of the king's robe. When he returned to his men, they were surprised that David did not take advantage of the situation. They thought David had lacked courage, so they were about to do it for him. But David stopped them. David had felt badly about cutting the king's robe because in doing so, he had not only embarrassed the king, but also threatened and assaulted God's representative. This was a dishonorable act. David could not boast or feel proud about threatening the king. He could not feel proud about dishonoring the king. David honored the king because David honored God. And the king was God's man. Here we are taught the very first lesson concerning honor. Respect and honor is to be given where it is due. Respect is due to those in authority, but not only to those in authority. Respect is due to everyone. And get this, even if they themselves behave dishonorably, even if, as we say, they don't deserve it. Everyone, by virtue of their humanity, deserve to be respected as human beings. 
Why? Because human beings are created in God's image and in God's likeness. We are all shaped and formed in divinity. We all belong to God. And we cannot treat God's property, God's children, just as we please and hope to get away with it. There will certainly be eternal consequences. King Saul knew that David was the next anointed king of Israel. But he didn't care. He behaved disrespectfully toward David, both as future royalty as well as God's choice. He did not think that David deserved it. Nevertheless, despite the king's disrespect for him and for the king's overall disrespectful behavior, David did not think it right to meet disrespect with disrespect. He will defend himself, yes, but he will not mock his opponent. That is just unsportsmanlike behavior. After King Saul exited the cave, David called to him from a distance and apologetically he told the king what he had done, showing him his cloak. I believe that it was perhaps one of David's men who held up the king's garment to him because uh, King Saul had only heard David's voice. David did not leave himself exposed. David tried in that moment to convince the king that he meant him no harm. That he could have killed him when he had the chance, but didn't. That he had great respect for him. More than all those reasons, David tried to prove to the king that he, David, was essentially an honorable person. David said to the king, verse 13, As the ancient proverb says, Out of the wicked comes forth wickedness. But my hand shall not be against you. In other words, wicked deeds are a sign of wicked people. Wicked people do wicked things. And by implication, honorable people do honorable things. My honorable behavior, O King, David reasoned, is a sign of my honorable character. So here we are taught the second lesson concerning honorable behavior. The second reason why we ought to act honorably is on the basis of self-respect. The wicked behave wickedly. You may have learned that people are not all good or all bad. This sounds true. However, people act from a moral center. Find that moral center and you can better interpret their behavior. Respectful people habitually act respectfully. Honorable people habitually act honorably. It is as simple as that. Therefore, out of a moral center of self-respect, we show respect to others, whether or not they act like they deserve it. Aren't they as human as we are? So we ought to treat them no less than we want to be treated. Now, some people use honor as a motivation for vengeance. They seek revenge in order to reclaim respect, respect that they deemed lost at the hands of a perpetrator. This is probably what King Saul was doing. However, this is not how David understood the word honor. Honor could never be equated with or reclaimed by vengeance. They're opposites. Justice is not the same as revenge, and neither is honor. Rather than revenge, David left justice to God. David awaited God's judgment in this situation. So, brothers and sisters, friends, we began by looking at two aspects of the definition of honor, and we learned two reasons why we ought to act honorably. The first part of the definition means to regard with respect. This is outwardly focused. Here we're respecting someone else. The second part of the definition has to do with doing what is morally right. 
This is inwardly focused. Here we are respecting ourselves by acting in accordance with godly moral principles. Principles we hold highly. These are our highest moral standards. May we who identify as Christian be known as a people of honor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Suffrages Suffrage B Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your spirit. The Collect Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our God and Heavenly Father, we pray for your church in the world. May our witness be effective. May the love you shed abroad in our hearts never run cold. May we be in this world, but not of it. We pray for the Anglican Church in the province of the West Indies, for its ministry and for its leadership, for Archbishop, the Most Reverend Howard Gregory. In our diocese, the Anglican Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, we pray for our Bishop, the Right Reverend Claude Berkeley. Meet his challenges, Lord, deepen his faith, enfold his loved ones in your care. 
We also pray for retired bishops Clive and Calvin. In our parish, the parish of St. Mary Takarigra, remember before you all priest in charge, Reverend Father Dr. Anderson Maxwell. We also pray for the supporting clergy of our parish, priests and deacons. Bless, guide, and strengthen us all in your name. We pray for your providence in this nation, especially in the lives of those who love and trust you. The devil is the god of this world. May he never triumph. Save us, your holy people, from his clutches. Save our souls daily and bring us safely into life eternal. We thank you for the righteous, the honorable, and those faithful to your word. We who are the salt of the earth and the light of this world, keep us ever faithful and effective. May we be ever true to you. May we never be weary in well-doing. May we reap your eternal rewards. Lord God Almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in your safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer of Dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>